Hello. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to measure the half-life of protactinium. And for this, we're going to need the following equipment. These two bits here are the Geiger Muller tube. Over here is our Geiger counter. Got a microphone attached to the uh, Geiger counter, just so that we've got an audible idea of the uh, of the decay. Got a stop clock, a clamp stand and our protactinium generator. First thing that we need to do is we need to take a measurement of the background radiation. And to do this we're going to take a, we're going to measure the count rate over a period of time. So the time that I'm going to do it for is about two minutes. So I'm going to do it uh, two minutes and measure the count over that period of time. So I've chosen that because it's a decent length of time to get a reasonable average but not too long so it's going to uh, cause my experiment to take too much time. So let's get our uh, Geiger counter set up. Um, Geiger Muller tube is in this box with the uh, protection around it. So it's a Geiger Muller tubes are very fragile, so that's why it's uh, kept in this box. That slots into a little holder here, and we're going to position that holder in the position that our um, protactinium generator is going to be in. Plug this, plug our Geiger counter, Geiger Muller tube into the Geiger counter, switch it on, and we should see that we have a, that we're uh, counting the background radiation. We're going to position this Geiger Muller tube in the position that our protactinium generator is going to be in. So if we take that out of the box, take the lid off, carefully remove it, and it comes with a little little stand, goes in the stand, and I'm going to position my clamp stand or Geiger Muller tube using a clamp stand in the position above where I'm going to take that measurement. Now that it's in position, I'm going to put the protactinium generator back into the bottle while we're not using it. Just so that we're reducing our exposure to any ionising radiation. So now we're ready to take that uh, background radiation count. And to do this, we're going to reset our stop clock and we're going to reset the Geiger counter and simultaneous, simultaneously start the stop clock. So three, two, one. And we're going to measure the uh, count over two minute period. So, after two minutes, the count was 41, and the time was two minutes, which is 120 seconds. So our uh, count rate is 41 divided by 120. which is 0.342 counts per second over that period. So this has given us our background radiation count. What we're going to do now is we're going to get our protactinium generator working and then we're going to measure how the activity changes over time and then we're going to use that to measure the half-life. So to do that we're going to get our protactinium generator out of the uh, box and to get a protactinium generator working you need to shake it and I'll put a, a link underneath this video uh, to explain where, you, where the website that explains how a protactinium generator works uh, so we've got it out of the box, and to activate it we shake it. Uh, safest way to do that, just to avoid any uh, mishaps, is to uh, get a tray and uh, shake it over the tray. That means if there's any problems with 
any problems with the uh, like bottle breaking or anything like that, then we haven't contaminated the um, area around, and we have only contaminated the uh, the tray, so it's easier to clean up. So something that we've got to do before we um, uh, take our measurement is just stop our stop clock and reset it. And we need to reset the Geiger counter, start the stop clock, and place our protactinium generator underneath the Geiger Muller tube. So I'm going to try and do all these three at once. I won't be able to achieve it, but if you're working in teams, then uh, you should be able to do that. So un under it goes. And when you're collecting data of how something changes over time, the best way that I've found to do it is just to uh, take a user camera and video the timer and the display here at the same time and then review that footage later on. So we're going to reset it, start the stop clock and to work out the half-life you're going to need to review the uh, footage that you've taken and Stop the video at certain intervals, measure the count rate, or write down the count rate, and then that will give you your uh, data. So say if you were taking readings every two seconds, after every two seconds, pause the video, look to see what the count rate is at that point, and record your data. Then you're going to need to uh, plot a graph of that. That should give you a nice exponential decay curve. And then from that, you can work out the half-life. So if you run your measurement over a course of about three minutes, then uh, you should find that by now it's kind of gone back to something similar to what the background count was. So it's at this point that we can uh, stop recording our uh, data. Um, got to make sure that we put everything away properly. So remember any radioactive sources, then they need to go straight back into uh, their storage and uh, follow whatever um, health and safety procedures uh, are suitable for your the way you're doing the work. And then there we have it. That's how we take our measurements. So I've reviewed the footage that I took on uh, my mobile phone and I looked back through it and every 10 seconds I wrote down what the uh, count rate was. And I've used this spreadsheet to work out uh, what the count rate was over that 10 second period uh, by just uh, taking one number away from the previous number. On this section here of the spreadsheet here, this is where I've worked out what the background count was. So this was the uh, time that I took the uh, measurement for, so 120 seconds. The count rate was 41, and there's 0.342 counts per second. And I've scaled that up to 10 seconds, because I'm using 10 second intervals over here. Uh, so I've just multiplied this uh, count rate by 10 here. And I've then used this to, and I've subtracted that background radiation uh, count away from this. So uh, this, um, so this column here is the uh, count over the 10-second period. Subtract the background radiation count, and then the following uh, cell is the difference between uh, where the current count and the previous count subtract this background radiation count and so on. So it's given me how that count rate changes over time and then I have plotted a graph for it and if we were to add a trend line there then uh, we would see that it follows a exponential de decay pattern and then we would be from that we would be able to work out what the half-life of our sample was.